I'm so delighted this evening to be joined by my friend Nolene, um, who uh, is fighting the good fight all the time. And as I said earlier, tonight we are going to be discussing the scandal of our nursing homes and what has been happening since uh, this appalling lockdown began and John Waters often says, John uh, Nolene, that there are two, the two saddest rooms in the country Definitely. are creches, the little newborns being delivered into the hands of strangers away yeah. from their mother and father at such a young age and then we've got the other end the of elderly. the cycle which is the nursing people, homes. Yeah. Now, you have had an insight into what is going on in our nursing yeah. homes, and Nolene is going to talk to us, and they, they, they've been trying so hard to highlight this issue for everyone's sake. So that's why tonight we are going to talk about, even though this so-called pandemic is lot, well and truly over at this mm -hmm. stage, and everything should be going back to normal, but of course that's not the plan and it never was, for some facilities, nursing homes, visitors continue to be banned. Yeah. You've been through the mill. Yeah, with this. we're 18 weeks now, Gemma, trying to get access to see my aunt. My, my uncle died in April the 19th, and he was in the room next door to her. And with result, um, she doesn't even know that he's dead. Do you know what I mean? Because she was so sick with this virus, supposedly, that, uh, which is only a flu, Gemma and uh, we lost my uncle we've buried him and she doesn't even know and she doesn't know because you haven't had the chance we to haven't even had a conversation about this because we're not allowed to go into the nursing home we've been i've been ringing them every day looking for to get access nearly in the beginning i rang the department of health we rang simon harris's office we're still waiting for replies we've come out roaring and crying after visiting my aunt and uncle when my uncle was alive because before he died, four weeks before he died, we were denied access into the nursing home. So we didn't even know what was going on in the beginning. And so just to, like they were fine. The two of them the were living The two of them were there. grand. My aunt had, um, and uncle had no symptoms. They had no temperature. And it was just locked down first of all, completely with the nursing homes. And then it gradually kind of was all downhill from there. And my, the day that we went over to see my auntie, she said to the guy, let them come in. And she was able to lift her hand and say, bring them in, bring them in. And he said, no, because he had all this PPE, frightening gear on him. And for anybody that's sick, it's ridiculous because like, that makes them feel that they have something really seriously wrong with them. Because it's paranoia, do you know what I mean? Especially for an elderly person. Mm. Like imagine you being in that situation. Like it'd be frightening for me but my point is that we actually need a major inquiry with this. Oh, for sure. Because why are we being denied access? If the virus, if, if my aunt did have the virus and if the virus is gone, why are we being denied access 18 weeks after it? You don't think that she has No, I don't anything. think my aunt ever had the virus. And you're in this situation now where and sh she doesn't have children of her own. No. So you no. are effectively the We're next the of next kin. We're the next of kin, exactly. Yeah. And so you've or you've been told that you have to wear masks outdoors. Yeah. Out the in the car park. And the secretaries have call, come out to us any time that we've gone over to visit her because after my uncle died we said that we were going to keep continuing going over to the nursing home, looking in the window and they refused to open the window in the beginning. My mom's in her 80s, she went over to see her sister-in-law and my mom was left standing outside of complete glass windows. They had my aunt in the wheelchair and we had to have a conversation to a deaf lady. Like, this is how ridiculous this is. My aunt is deaf, severely deaf in her right ear. She has dementia and you're trying to have a conversation through all of this glass, double glaze. So I'd like to know what kind of a virus, maybe some doctor or professor out there tonight can tell us that um, has this virus got is it able to go through double glazed windows is it um, a Wi-Fi virus or is it a laser virus that's able to go through double glazed glass and why in the beginning will they not open the window if we don't wear the mask the guy that owns the place said 
we're not going to open the windows for you. So my aunt, you might as well say, is in actually prison. It's the new because Nazi camp. There, it's a new Nazi camp. And there is a sign on the door. Oh yeah, there's says, two signs that says no, no visitors. visitors. Yeah, I had the, um, I'm not going to mention anybody's names, but I had the, um, now again. Sorry, just the checking head of nursing on the phone the other day. And I asked her, I need to be able to go in and see her. My uncle died in April, so we're into July now. So he's over eight weeks gone, isn't that right? Yeah. April, May, June, July, more. More, yeah. Three months gone. Three months. And we still haven't had a conversation. I can't say, well, how are you, Mary? You know, I can't touch her. Yeah. You can't give her a hug. I can't give her a hug. I can't console her. I can't tell her all the and people you, that were asking about her. But you think she does know? I mean, she's obviously Yeah, she has. I told them not her. to tell her so that it wouldn't upset her. But I feel they did say something to her because she said that her, she thinks her, her mother has taken my uncle. I won't mention his name, but that's what she said. Mm. And does she have a slight bit of Alzheimer's or? Yeah, she has a mild, I'd say. It's like she, she's able, she knows who we are. Yeah. She's able to have a conversation. Yeah. But are they afraid she's going to tell me something? That why, are, why am I being blocked from going in to see her? This is the part I don't understand. Why has management not got any um, compassion for my aunt after burying her husband? Uh, my uncle was put in a bag, a, a body bag, a closed body bag. He was put in a closed coffin, you know? And then we had to bury my uncle, pick out a coffin. And my aunt had no... Uh, Hand actor part? No, no. In the... No. So it's all she, very she callous. she didn't even go to her husband's no, funeral? No, 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 no. She wasn't able to go you to see, her husband's funeral. You see, like these funeral. are the things that we've been very... We've been put through so much yeah. in the last few months. We've been desensitized, yeah. dehumanized. Yeah. But when you say something like that, that a woman who has been married to a man for yeah. how long? Decades. She's married since in the 60s, like the okay. early 60s. So they're yeah. 50 years yeah. plus yeah, together. married. Yeah. And because of this fake pandemic, yeah. which 99.9% .9 of people make a full recovery from. Yeah. The flu. She was not allowed to go to her husband's funeral. No. I mean, they, this no. is... It's, it, it's nonsense. Pure nonsense. It's disgraceful because, like, <clears throat> they have no family of their own. Like, they have no kids. So, for my cousins well, you're and a, ourselves you're our to... Children. Yeah. You are the closest thing. Yeah, it's, it's very sad. Like, it's... But it's taking its toll on you and you as the relatives. Because we're being punished also, Gemma. We're course. being punished because we're told we have to stay outside. We're not allowed in. And I was told... We can't give you a date when we're going to be allowing you in or anybody in. I, I'm listening to the same story I was told from head of nursing off of all the people that are in the nursing home. But I, I would say to everybody out there tonight that mm -hmm. please do go to the window. If it's on the ground floor of any nursing home, please visit your relatives. It's a long day from eight o'clock in the morning from the time they wake up until the evening time. It's a very long time, Gemma. They need to see you. Even if you can't get access into the place, they need to see your face. They need to see it. They need to see that, that, there's there's somebody that, you, there. that you care. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like for to leave them like that there for all those days or weeks or whatever, months now, we're 18 weeks now with no access into this nursing home. And I was told last, during the week, Gemma, from head of nursing, that they're making pods, glass pods now for to visit them. Now, my aunt is not paying 80% of her pension for to be put in a dog kennel or a cat cage. And I've no intentions of leaving her here if that's going to be the situation because I can't take any more of it. I am having sleepless nights over it. Of course, it. of course. I am upset over it every time I go to visit them, her, or visit my auntie. My, I, when my uncle was alive, like, I mean, he told me before he died that he was actually starving. He told me to bring him up three ham sandwiches. This was the Saturday before he died. He died the following Sunday. And even when I did bring him up food, I brought him up turkey, I brought him up donuts, and they wouldn't give it to him. Why? Imagine, I because don't know. Because of this, I don't know. this infection control nonsense. I don't know, I don't know. They, do, they told me they weren't giving it to him. Yet they would give him um, alcohol. I brought him up a little bottle, bottle of wine, and they gave him that. So why give a person that sick wine with a flu? Hmm. And then later on, I found out that both of them 
had been ordered to take, um, well not ordered as such, the, the pharmacist um, within the nursing home has on their bill morphine. So do you give a person with flu morphine? I've never heard of that. Unusual. Maybe a hot whiskey. Unusual. A hot whiskey? Yeah. Paracetamol? Possibly. Anodine? Yeah. But not morphine. morphine. Well, morphine expedites yeah. death. Yeah. That's yeah. what it does. It brings forward death. So I'm actually very unhappy to have found that out recently. Of course you are. By paying a bill, I went through the medication and on the medication list, there was two bags of it ordered for my uncle and two for my aunt. Now, some people have been saying to me, because I am being contacted by an awful lot of people at the moment, and I can't get back to many of you who are concerned about elderly loved ones in nursing homes. And nobody is better at illustrating it than this lady here, because I know her and she's unbelievably compassionate. And anyone, they're so lucky to have you as a niece. Um, but I've been told that some people are saying that they have seen this thing, end of life medication. Yeah. Have you come across this? That they're, they're putting this on? Well, funny you should say that because January of this year, I was produced a piece of paper from the nursing home and I was told that they won't be resuscitated. So this was in January of this year. They won't be resuscitated? If, no. If what? If they have COVID? Well, that wasn't mentioned, Gemma. That if, if they if they were to get sick or whatever, it didn't actually they did, she didn't actually went into m much detail about it. But I was asked to sign a form because um, as their next of kin, so I wasn't happy about it of at all. You and I said it to the lady on the desk. I said to her, wasn't really happy about that, that they wouldn't resuscitate them. Like my uncle, I mean, my uncle suffered with arthritis. There was nothing wrong with him. I was ringing him all the time because I was aware that, like, was he being looked after? Were they drinking enough of fluids? You know, because I used to bring my uncle up, whatever he'd be looking for. In between, what he'd be getting in the nursing home. You know what I mean? And it's not to say that there aren't some very good nursing no. homes out there. There certainly are, but there's some really bad ones, and yeah. the ones that are sort of focused on profit, profit, yeah. profit, yeah. Uh, are often the worst. Yeah, but like people say to me, like I've heard a priest saying to me, well, your, your aunt and uncle must have been in, uh, not a private nursing home, but believe it or not, Gemma, they, were, they are in a private nursing home, so it makes no difference which one it is. Oh, you know no. I mean? So no, it doesn't. I wasn't happy with that from a priest saying that to you. <laughs> either you know well I mean they're another kettle yeah. of fish and we may yeah. discuss them oh and he later. wasn't my uncle died with the last rites as well with no priest uh, to get the last rites off they weren't allowed in and even we weren't with my uncle when he died we were refused that and um, and did they say that he had was it COVID that they well that's what they have on the death and cert. do you think it no. no was he were you expecting him to die no definitely not no so you think basically that there was some, well, you don't, well, I you don't, don't know, you don't know All but he I went know downhill. Is that, yeah, he, he, went downhill. he died too quickly. Yeah, yeah, definitely died too and quickly. And did they put on the death certificate? Yeah, they did, they put COVID-19, yeah. Are you going to object to that or? Well, we're, we've been so upset and traumatized because it was one thing having to bury your uncle, mm -hmm. remember, without his wife, you know. And then to actually, my aunt then kind of, was like as if she was completely drugged out of it then after that, you see. For four weeks, I was going up every day to the nursing home. Myself and my sister were going up every day and we were looking in the window to see how she was, you see. We made them open the curtains to have a look at her and my aunt was like a zombie in the bed, yeah. And had she been like that before? No, no, sure, she was able to talk and tell you to come on into her. Like, my aunt had no symptoms, Gemma. The nursing home said they did test and they did that test came back. They did the test on a Friday. That's what they said. They tested my aunt and my uncle and they came back COVID-19 positive. But I was told by another doctor that there is no test. There is none because we know that these glasses, if mm. I did a test on them, yeah. it would show up. It's yeah. on the papaya. Yeah. It's on a goat. Well, my, it. Everyone has my it. My mom went to her it's own everywhere. GP there 
at the beginning of March and the doctor told my mum that uh, COVID-19 was always there. Yeah. And if you look at the bottle of the bottle of Dettol, it has it on the very uh, small print on the bottom. Yeah. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. It's common yeah. cold. Common cold. Yeah. It's part of the. Yeah. So you this know. nonsense has to stop. We have to be able to get in to see our loved ones. We have to be able to touch them and say, um, you know, you, everything's going to be okay. Reassure them. A stranger reassured my aunt or uncle. That's that's ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely ridiculous. But to put them into a closed coffin, and we got no, we 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 never said goodbye to them. Like we're left in limbo, and because it was such, um, it was so quickly, it happened so rapidly, Gemma, that we're still kind of in shock. We can't believe that he's gone. So my aunt, my uncle was in one room, my auntie was in the next room, and now she she kind of she kind of has an idea that he's not there, and she told me she feels afraid. You know what I mean? And then the and other thing too, Gemma, before you say anything, is that when. I go up to see my aunt in the daytime. I have a carer in the room at, at the door of my aunt's bedroom, listening and watching what we're saying. Why? I don't get that. Now, don't forget, I've, I've complained to HICWA, to the Department of Health, the HSC. Some of them in the HSC are okay, but some of them are not okay. Mm -hmm. Like, to have to get onto a web page, remember that a lot of people are not computer literate. They won't know how to fill out an application form or whatever online. Yeah. You know, they just don't. They, they're not going to bother. A questionnaire. Have your say for the HSC. No, we need a helpline. Not for alone. We need a helpline for people, the families of people um, out there. And we need a person on the other end of the phone to say, this should not have happened. This, somebody has to be made responsible for this. Like Simon Harris what did you do for the people? What did you do for the families? You did nothing for the families. We're left in limbo now. We're left with the bill of the, um, of the, of the, the death. You know what I mean? You don't care about the families. You don't care about what we're left with. It's not good enough, Gemma. Well, you're not able to grieve. No, I mean, no, you have a lot of no. questions and, like, <laughs> and you're worried yeah. sick it was, about it was, your aunt. Yes, of course I am, because like, she's left there now on her own. She feels isolated, abandoned. She told me she's lonely, she's depressed. Why she wouldn't is. she be? She hasn't got her husband. Her husband was in the next room. Now he's not there. Do you know what I mean? They've already filled it with somebody else. It's barbaric. Yeah, and it when is I, barbaric. When I asked the lady that is the um, head of nursing in there, I said to her, what's going to happen if everybody in the nursing home gets COVID-19? Oh, she said, we'll just fumigate the place and start all over again. Oh. So I'm beginning to think now, regards to the nursing homes, they've changed nursing to care centres. So what exactly does, does this mean, Gemma? Care centre. Is it debt care centre? Yeah. Because nursing means I will nurse you back to health. to health. I will look after you. I will nurture you. I will care for you. But a care centre is something completely different. And it's not a word that we used in Ireland. No. You know, it's no. more from the Anglo, from the British no. or the American, but yeah. not because we always had nurses yeah. working yeah. in, they were called, you know, geriatric homes, but yeah. we didn't need them when we had strong families yeah. because the matriarch or the patriarch of the family would stay within the family and be nursed within the family until they died. and. You know, our parents' generation, they, they wouldn't have thought of putting their parents into a nursing no. home. But it's the way that society is now, and it's run by very left-wing people who hate the family. Yeah. And they have encouraged this yeah. drive to elderly people yeah. we don't need into them. nursing homes, yeah. into care homes, and babies into creches. Break up the family. This will be the norm now, and that's yeah. what they're doing. Well, I am a full-time carer for my mother. Yeah. And I'd like to say and to Simon do. Harris and all the ministers for health out there, your charity lies with the people of Ireland regards to looking after their own family members. And like to hand somebody 200 a week for uh, home care, like for, for myself personally, uh, as a carer, to be handed 219 euros when you're given 350 euros a week for COVID payments is an absolute disgrace. So somebody needs to 
go back to, to school and learn how to add, subtract and multiply because we need more money than that. Do you know what I mean? Like how dare the Minister for Health pay 200 and some people are only getting 70 or 90. It, it, it goes on a means test, Gemma. But they didn't mean test this uh, COVID-19. They gave, are you, are they you just talking gave out, in relation to older? The, no, to, 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 if, uh, like as a carer at home for my mom. Oh, right, like, yeah. Like I am already a home carer, you know what I mean? But why can't the government not give the people the minimum wage regards to that? Mm. Why do you have to, why can't they give out uh, 350 for COVID payments? To everybody, everybody's at the getting the three hundred and fifty. That's to entrap them yeah. and to yeah. get them out of the, the yeah. routine yeah. of working. But they're and not employment. rewarding the person who's looking after a home carer at home. Mm. And like we no, have no. thousands of home carers out there looking after kids, their husbands, their wives, their relatives, their family, their mothers, their fathers. You know what I mean? And the government needs to step up to the plate now and actually pay those people what they're worth. Because don't forget, we're keeping them from the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So they're saving a lot of money by this. But they don't want them in the family no. home. No. They no. don't want them. No. They want them put into these care homes yeah. and they can euthanize them. That's what's coming next. Yeah. I mean, this is, look, the nursing home scandal is one of the, you know, the most appalling aspects of all yeah. of this. There's no doubt. Well, it's getting worse. in the beginning, yeah. you know, if they really cared about people, they yeah. would have, you know, acted in relation to the nursing homes, but they didn't. Yeah. And in the same way with the airport, yeah. you know, they would have for a very short period, maybe closed them. But John and I were saying we would have, you know, every room would have a big screen in which they could talk to their families through FaceTime or whatever. And that mm. that could be facilitated so easily that their families would be there yeah. but in the room but with if, them all but if the a time. But if a disability though, uh, Gemma, like being deaf, Gemma, my aunt can't re lip read what I'm saying. She needs to be able to see what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. So a face mask doesn't work for and her. And when you challenged the nursing home um, in relation to, like you were told yeah. that you had to wear masks yeah. outside in outside, the fresh air. yeah, in the fresh air. And what, what was, when you, when you challenged them, what did they say we're, to that? Like, I mean, this, we've been told by three or four of them up there to put a face mask on you and we've been handed them in a box. Now, on the side of a box, it says... On the side of the box that he's handed me these face masks it has on the side of the box this mask will not protect you from the coronavirus no. well it's a bit like trying to protect yourself from mosquitoes by putting yeah. up a wire fence but like if, my, if my aunt is eight foot away from me on the inside of the room eight feet away from you okay and if i'm on the outside and i'm another two or three feet away because there's it's, it's a kind of a border you yeah. know what i mean and the window opens out it doesn't open it doesn't open. I it know. opens out. It's just it's just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Really stiff. How am I supposed to have a conversation? Well, you couldn't even really get your hand in yeah. to touch her yeah. hand, could no. you? No, no. They have her too far away. They have her over where the bed is. They have the wheelchair brought right and away. Is there any sense are you finding in these nursing homes that the staff say to you, "Look, is there anything we can do? We no. want you to no. no, no." Even when they had, we had two garden visits. The first one was horrendous. It was a windy day. We had three carers supervising. The, I think there was four people in the garden. It was an enclosed garden with a locked gate. We had the owner on the outside and we had three carers watching yeah. the people. And then my aunt nearly fell. She wanted to sit up in the wheelchair and I went to, to be able to, I went over to approach her and I was told, sit down, don't move, stay there. Yeah, I've spoken to like a kindergarten child. Yeah. My. Yes. Yeah. So, and are there other relatives that you can talk to about this? Do you feel are there other people, you know, who are worried? Is there any sense of people coming together and saying, "Look, well, that we, would be a great idea." And I think, it? yeah, I think we need the mansion house for that. A big inquiry in the mansion house <laughs> <laughs> with your favorite person. <laughs> well, you never know. China. Yeah. And China gave us the virus. <laughs> Well, we need so, we need somewhere. We need now somewhere. I know she's very yeah. busy bringing in the hate speech legislation mm -hmm. because we won't even be able to talk about this soon yeah. because we'll be well. We have races. A, we have a three-legged race government at the moment. Yeah, and the only people that play a three-legged race is children. Yeah. So this has to change. All this nonsense yeah. has to stop. We have people 
that are lonely, isolated, left alone. We don't know whether they are being fed because we're not allowed in. We, we're not seeing what they're getting. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if they're giving my aunt. I left in things. They didn't even take them out of the bags. I, have to, I had to say to the girl the other day, the nurse, can you open that bag, take out the minerals, take out the biscuits, take out whatever. Let her see what I've brought over. Like my aunt can't get up out of the bed and walk over and help herself. So this bag was left, the shopping bag was left there, tied there. Another one was left over there. I said, can you take those biscuits out of that bag, please, and put them on the table for her? Like, they are dependent on people to feed them. Yeah. So are they not going to feed them? You're bringing in the things, are they not going to give them to them? And the saddest thing of all is like, that at least 20 years ago, in these nursing homes, most people in there would know the carers. They might be Mary Murphy from down the road. Yeah or ah yes sure you were married yeah. to my paddy's nephew whatever yeah but now they come from global every corner of the, the planet global, yeah. often they don't speak english yeah. um they can't communicate properly no. and it's very very difficult and then when a relative does ring up they're told they, they, they can't understand what they're saying so then they have to wait until the next day for to get it the head of nursing to ring them back. It's so everything yeah. has to be explained. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Four or five times. I was driving past a nursing home in Dublin the other day, and at the bus stop across the road, there was about fifteen people, staff that had come out, yeah. and they were all from Asia. Yeah. Asia, all of them. Because they will accept third yeah. world wages, and yeah. these people. But we have third world healthcare, Gemma. Well, of course. We have to because, like, look of at this. Of course, we do. Look at this. Someone gave this for free to me today. The independent. And for did you free. see this? Did okay. you see this, Gemma? Because we don't buy it. Uh, twenty twenty nine. This girl will be getting her MRI scan in twenty twenty nine. This is she's read, waiting read nine it. years. You read it there. Twenty years. Twenty now nine years. They gave, They got this yeah. for free, yeah. so they didn't buy it. Yeah. This rag. Yeah. They still do the odd good story, to be yeah. fair. So she, yeah. but, but she's Down syndrome, God yeah. lover, yeah. you know. Yeah. So maybe that's why, because they don't in, like with elderly yeah. people, like with babies, they don't want them, and they definitely don't want Down syndrome people. But this is what's going to happen, Gemma. It'll start with the elderly. It'll work its way down. She puts up with so much pain. Yeah. This teenager, they don't care, and she's fifteen. Yeah, and her date for her MRI is in a decade. Yeah, a decade from now. Yeah, and you. You, not you, yeah. you, not you maybe, mm -hmm. but many, many Irish people are obeying the orders yeah. of the HSE. We have signs up all over. Well, they have put signs up all over, you know, to respect the HSE and follow the HSE guidelines. And this is what you're following. Yeah. A health service that has to, you know, a, a 10 year delay for an MRI scan for a child with Down syndrome. Yeah, but even when you ring the D doctor though now, you ring the, I don't know if anybody's rang the D doctor recently. You're waiting three hours for it to get an answer because you're giving the message first of all to whoever answers the phone for yeah. the D doc. Then the nurse rings you back and yes. then you have to wait for a doctor to ring you back. Yeah. So this is what, we're, this is what we have to put up with now. So we have doctor on call on the phone. And they're, they're doing all this telemedicine. Yeah. Which is effectively what they were doing before then anyway, mm -hmm. because doctors nowadays don't say, right, lie up there now and we're going to examine you. It's just write the prescription, yeah. get the big drugs out. Mm -hmm. And that's all, that's yeah. all doctors do. Well, you can't take a temperature on the phone, Gemma. No, you can't. No. So this is ridiculous. So it's just yeah. contradictions yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's not good enough. So you have been through the mill yeah. and you're incredibly brave to speak out. Yeah, well, I haven't got a problem telling the truth, Gemma. Mm. Because, like, I mean, if we're living in a far left country that's broken, because does far left mean that they're going to leave everybody over there to the left? Is this the country left we're living over. in? Left, left over. over left over to one side. Yeah. yeah. Left, yeah. abandoned. There's no such thing yeah. as far right or far left. It's either the truth or a lie. Yeah. It's right yeah. or, or wrong. wrong. Always was, always will be. Mm -hmm. These are just divisions yeah. that they create. Yeah. Well, it's communism versus Christianity. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. choose between the two. Communism, yeah. Christianity. It's not communism, mm. capitalism. Yeah. Christianity is what gave us our free will mm -hmm. and the freedom to do the right thing, follow the law of yeah. God, or follow 
the laws of an organisation that aborts, what is it, 6666? More than that, I'd say. Of course. But, but put they the, have to put They the, put those numbers to sensationalise it. Because it we know what well. it means. Yeah. Oh, they're all in. They're all in with Nick. They sure are. Yeah. They, they love sure them. They sure are. They're working for him. So we need doctors and nurses to actually speak out now about this before more people die, you see. Because so if you, we really need to know what's going on. Because we're, I can't go inside, so I can't see what's actually happening. But the people who are working on the inside, they know exactly what's going on, mm. you see. So there's some kind of a cover up here with all this. And you see, one of the things, the reasons they use a lot of foreign staff who don't speak English, who are, you know, thousands of miles from their own home, is because they're more vulnerable than us. You know, they're not going to kick up stink like we would yeah. for our own people. You yeah. have a connection with your own people. Yeah. It's a tribal, it's a genetic, yeah. it's a, you know, a nationalist. Bond. It's, it's bond. a bond. Yeah. And we're such a, everyone knows everyone in Ireland. Yeah. So when you bring in people who don't know anyone, you don't have that bond and they don't have the same sense of wanting to protect their own, their yeah. clan. But um, they need to go back to compassion. You have to have compassion for the sick. Yeah. Where's Florence Nightingale here? Nowhere you know? to be seen. No. Well, that's because they abolished yeah. Yeah. the great nuns and yeah. destroyed yeah. the nuns who provided the vast majority of healthcare yeah. in this country and they did it out of love for Jesus yeah. and compassion. Well, it's going to affect everybody eventually because we're going to have a downward spiral with all the hospitals, you see, because if we can't get a doctor on the phone and we can't get a doctor appointment, what's going to happen in the future? Mm. Within the next two or three years? So, yeah, I mean, you would hope that people will come together and try yeah, and... Um, definitely. I would ask the people in all nursing homes, their families to go and visit them more regularly to let the, the owners of the nursing homes and the HSEC, yeah. we're not going to put up with this. This is nonsense. We ca not everybody can, some people have an underlying medical condition. We can't all wear masks either. Mm -hmm. So don't be hard on people that don't wear masks because you do not know what their problem is. They might have asthma or something else wrong with them, mm. you know? So mandatory vaccination or mandatory uh, masks don't work for everybody. But at the moment, the government is bringing in mandatory vac um, masks, but this is only the start of something worse because if they are looking to gag you with a mask, a mask, yeah. mandatory on a bus, mm -hmm. like I drive, thank God, I haven't got to get on a bus, you know? Well, we're probably going you to know? be challenging that in the yeah. courts. I mean, it's utterly illegal. Yeah. And Absolutely. The, the other and do you know that they don't even mandate it as a medical mask? Yeah. It's any covering. So you could actually, yeah. I don't know, did you say this to me earlier no, no, today? No. You could actually just do that. If you look at the letter of the law in this, the regulation yeah. that he put up yesterday or the day before, it's any covering of yeah. your face. So you can just go like that and refer them back to the legislation mm -hmm. and it you know anything that covers your face but people so that are, shows that it is a scam yeah, because but they're, they're being, not medical but people masks. are being refused to get on the bus the bus drivers yeah. won't let them on the bus unless they have a mask well this is disgraceful yeah, yeah. but dublin bus of course are a, a disgraceful company yeah. and you know it, this is to be expected yeah it's outrageous well the other thing too that i'm afraid of is because i have nieces as well is that um they're putting fear in children Mm. And this television program that we have, which I won't mention, with no news, they have everybody afraid because people are ducking and diving in the supermarkets with this mask on them and they think that everybody has a virus and not everybody has a virus, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, like you're, you're breathing back in your germs. Yeah. And if you smoke, I know someone that's, that is a smoker that died recently. So is that because they're inhaling back in this toxic nicotine? Probably. Because we have openings here and here and everywhere else. Yeah. Ears. There's yeah. a reason. Like, we weren't born with masks. Yeah. If we needed one, would God not have had one on us? Exactly. Only dogs wear a mask. Yeah. Muzzle. Um, Bulldog. Well, that's what they are. They are a muzzle. <laughs> yeah. And it's a means of yeah. trying to see how many people yeah. are conforming. Yeah. How many people will take yeah. the chip, will take the, the vaccine. Vaccine. Well, well. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm not happy about that at all at all well you're one of the many people no, who obviously no. 
Now, vaccines don't work for everybody and people need to really take this really seriously now because this is going a step too far. Yeah, moving you, a little bit there. You don't give a vaccine to everybody that's healthy. I don't get this at all, you know what I mean? A healthy nation. And like, even if one person dies, I know one person is too many to die, too ridiculous, but people die every day, Gemma. Mm. They die from car accidents, they die from drowning, they die from smoking, they die from cancer. So About like, 100 a day yeah, in, in Ireland Yeah, this die. is not a pandemic. Because there's no excess. Our news mortality. is frightening people. It has the it has the over seventies terrified. Yeah, they're worse about it than anybody else. Mm -hmm. They're scared of their life. Like I have a niece, and and she's afraid to go out. You know, kids are afraid to go they're out. Terrified. You know. And I've heard this off of other people as well, like people that won't even go to other people's houses because they're afraid they're going yeah. to pick up this virus. Yeah. Like we get the flu every year, but what people have to realize is that when you get the flu, it's a week coming, you'll have it for a week and it's a week gone, three weeks, and then the flu is gone. Mm. But I heard last Monday on the radio, I was driving and I heard Luke O'Neill saying, the professor from Trinity College saying. The immunologist. Yes, he said, it's gone. Ah. Ireland doesn't have the virus. So my point is, with the whole lot of it is, why are we being stopped from going on our holidays, Gemma? Oh, yeah. Why? How come we can get on a Ryanair flight, Gemma, or Aer Lingus, and we can't get inside a nursing home? Mm-hmm. It's not adding up. It doesn't make sense. No, no. But if you needed an abortion, oh, no yeah. problem. Oh, of course. No problem. Yeah. Um, you know, if you needed to get to the off-license, Mm-hmm. But now let's talk a little bit about, I mean, the, you're putting up such a great fight and in doing so, you are helping so many others yeah, because I think these more nursing people, homes need to be yeah, very, careful. very careful. Yeah. Uh, we're watching them yeah. and there is going to be a backlash. Yeah. There really is. They're charging outrageous amounts of money. Yeah. Um, but I want to move on to just the church, given that it is Sunday, and we talk a little bit about how mass is going now that everything is getting back. Yeah. Did you want to say anything else about the well, nursing I'm not, home I'm not situation? happy that the nursing home, like, we're how many months on now? We're 18 weeks on, isn't it? Yeah, eight weeks, eight weeks after the virus came. And the other thing I want to make point is that my uncle actually never left the room. He had arthritis. He never left the room, Gemma, so I'd like to know from the HSC, how did he get it? If he, if he did get COVID-19, I'd like to know how did he get it? Who, who, mm. do you like that, Gemma? Who, who, who yeah. brought it into him? Now you have yeah. it. And I did say that to the manager. Yeah. Who? Exactly. Yeah. Because this via, is what people China. really need to understand is that in all these flu vaccines that you're taking, you need to know exactly what's in the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. Because the WHO, World Health Organization, loves vaccines. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a sharp increase in those uh, in terms of COVID who got, had the flu vaccine. Even Mary Lou MacDonald, I think, who apparently got it. Um, she had had the flu vaccine last oh, year. Yeah. So there was a big, I think it was one third of those that got the flu vaccine got COVID. There was a study in the States. Um, so, you know, we know yeah. that the, look, these vaccines are lethal. I lethal, never get the vaccine. Lethal. I never get the flu vaccine because well, the flu, when you get the flu, you have it for maybe two weeks and it's gone. The best vaccine we can take for the flu is a hot Jemison. Gemma. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, alcohol. Uh, al yeah. Well, yeah. I now I'm not a big fan of alcohol. <laughs> well, I don't drink are myself. Safe. Yeah. No, no. but because it dehydrates. Yeah. And I know it's a very Irish thing, but in fact, lots of fluid, lots of water, water, yeah. water, flush it out, and then as soon as you can, get back up and out because it's being outdoors. That is the best. Getting the fresh air in. Yeah. But we've been giving out our leaflet. Um, on all of the risks of vaccines and I have to say these are going down an absolute treat and then also we have um, the coronavirus yeah. and the tyranny and all of that so people are definitely 
definitely waking up. Yeah. So like you e have been put through the mill. Even my it? mother, she doesn't like vaccines at all because when yeah. she was a child, she got a vaccine for diphtheria and she ended up mm. getting it. There you go. And my mom has to learn how to walk again. She had to be fed with a child's teapot in the Richmond mm. Hospital, yeah, with the throat. And she, she was only given oranges, you know what I mean, after it. So my there's an awful lot of questions behind vaccines. Yeah. Yeah. An awful lot. Yeah. An awful and I won't lot. be well, taking any racket. vaccine. I would actually, I would rather die than take this new chip vaccine. He can keep it. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates. I won't be taking any vaccine. I will not be chipped. No. So anybody that, if you want to give this new app on your phone, if you want to take, download this new app on your phone, I won't be. Mm. Because you're given the government or Gates, all these crowds, you're allowing them to access your private files. You're actually telling them, go ahead. You can have my PIN number of my phone, my details, my all my contact tracing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, But they were so saying that, the, um, just moving again a little bit, sorry, because I'm dominating here, that there was nearly a million people signed up to this app for the well, that's uh, what that they're contact saying, tracing. Gemma. I don't believe that no, for no. a second. I'd say that that's bullshit. Mm. They're, they're scaremongering people mm. into downloading this you yeah. know they are yeah they do this yeah. you know in the run-up to an election yeah. they're fake polls oh yeah. everyone's going to vote for Fine Gael or you know this is it's psychological programming yeah so there's absolutely no way on this earth yeah no, that, you need that your many own... Irish people no. signed up to it no no definitely not so again it's like, oh well if so many did I better sign up you know this yeah. is the mentality but don't forget but they have access you're allowing oh. them You'll have no privacy with this because they have access to the phone. Yeah. You're, you're opening up all your access accounts on your phone to this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you need to check either yeah. if, whether you're Apple or Android, go into your health app settings and make sure they have installed a coronavirus sort of schedule and everything that you need to know. Make sure you turn that off. Delete it. The yeah. health apps are actually not that easy to delete mm -hmm. but try and delete them because there was one there the other day that came up um in on my phone and it was about to your cycle i thought it was about how uh, much i was cycling mm -hmm. you know but it was actually your cycle for oh. women well of course men have mm. periods did you know that no yeah and it is right and it's not only racist today twitter we're silencing people who said men cannot get cervical cancer. If you say men cannot get cervical cancer, you'll be silenced on Twitter today. Mm. You will be banned, which is what I am currently. Mm. But this is a new thing now where they want to trace the menstrual cycle of men. I have to say men. Men apparently have periods now. I, did you know that? No. no. <laughs> so, but to be politically correct, so men and women, because men, you know, they're delighted at the idea that they can get have have periods. Mm. Isn't mm. it wonderful? I can't believe we're even. So, can they have this. a baby? Can they have a baby? What are you suggesting? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Oh, they God. can have everything. <laughs> Abortions. They, mm. you name it. But um, so this is what they're doing. They want to know when women are, you know, can get pregnant and they want to know it's too everything much yeah. about you. Get rid of them. I will get rid of mine only I need it to inform you about what's going on, but you can watch on your computers. Yeah. Um, Outrageous. Get rid of the smartphones, if yeah. at all possible. Let's just talk, as it is Sunday, about the New World Order churches because you're a great woman for taking on the, U <laughs> the UN. The Al we call oh, them the gosh. Aldi churches. Yeah, no. I won't be supporting any UN church, Gemma, or World Health Organization church, or a church that pushes vaccines. I'm sorry to say, no. How has it been since you started going back? Well, I missed going to mass because I'm a regular mass goer, and I did miss the church, I have to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wasn't happy that we were left with that gap. To me, it was too long. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't happy with Dermot Martin not allowing the government, the HSC, to um, have a say, yeah. you know, because God doesn't work for the HSC, you know, God is independent, you know, so I, t to me, I felt very hurt by it, mm -hmm. I have to say, you know, I missed going to Mass, 
I miss my commune, you know. Yeah. Well, I have to say now, um, my experience, and I sort of chop and change now because I can't bear the indoctrination that's coming from the altar of climate hoax, you know, refugees or, you know, all green. this. Yeah. yeah, the green agenda. The green, it's the yeah. green agenda. So I sort of, am, you know, more. Tr I prefer the more traditional churches. But today at mass, um, the priest put on his visor when he was preparing yeah. to give commun communion. And it's the sort of thing that makes you want to just get up and walk out. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, I, I've seen that as well. Last week I was at a mass in a different me. church and I've seen that as well. And I wasn't a bit happy with that at, at all. No. And then when I seen the mass, the priest, and the other priest that was giving out communion, he put actually a mask, like a muzzle, like a builder, Bob the Builder. He's like, oh, come yeah. on down to give out communion. So yeah, they Bob, do look like, bo like Bob, Bob the Builder, Bob DIY. The builder. It looks yes. like so I'm going to Woody's to get communion unfortunately it so does. it looks ridiculous it, because like god is the ultimate healer and like i mean we have to god is in control yeah. you know we don't need anybody else we don't need vaccine we don't need he's able to cure viruses diseases yeah. you know it's in his where hands. is our faith where is well their it's faith? certainly not in the church in ireland no. is it i mean it's a rare enough thing where were the priests nolene to speak out against the HSE who abort thousands and yeah, thousands well, of I'm babies. Well, I'm very upset about that as well, because like, I mean, I felt that the priest could have stood outside of some of the hospitals here with the people. Yeah. They didn't support the people with no. the abortion. Well, they no. closed the doors yeah. of the churches and now yeah. they're complaining that, you know, collections are way down. And I know where this is going mm -hmm. because the next thing will be Dermot Martin will be announcing, we're very sorry, people of Dublin, but we're going to have to sell your churches. Oh, we have some buyers here in the Klansky Mosque. Mm. And you will all have seen what happened in the last few days in Turkey, the magnificent Hagia Sophia Cathedral. Absolutely one of the most beautiful Catholic cathedrals in the world has been turned into a mosque. That's dreadful. This is coming mm. to Ireland because the church, they want it. They've yeah. been bringing Muslims onto the altar and it's all part of the globalist agenda to get rid of Christianity. It's shocking. Absolutely. But people need to speak up. Yeah. Because I could see today in the church I was in that people were uncomfortable. Like the man, one of the ministers for the Eucharist was walking around with the host, you know, and he approached me uh, with the host in his hand all the way across the pew. And by the time the host got to me, it actually had been damaged. Mm -hmm. And I said, and it, you know, it smelt of aftershave, probably hand sanitizer. I said, to, it tasted of that. Afterwards, I spoke to him and I said, you know, it was very disrespectful that you would take the host out and walk across the pew with it yeah, to me. We weren't allowed to go no. to the altar um, and that Jesus would not have behaved like that and he definitely wouldn't have worn a visor. Mm. You know, Jesus loved the sick. He wanted to be around the sick. And they're sending out the exact opposite message of Jesus. Yeah, it's it's just not on. But you, it's you totally are very, unacceptable. you do speak out. Oh, it was very hurt over it. Yeah, definitely. What do you think people should say to their 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 priests. Well, I wasn't happy in one of the churches I went there last Monday, and I seen that they had two stewards directing the people, bossing the people, I'd say, policing the people to their seats and telling you where you could sit and where you couldn't sit. Mm -hmm. And then there was a lady giving out the rosary, and as she was giving out the rosary, um, we had this other lady come down with the Bob the Builder mask screen on her, and she said, "You sit here, here, and here." She said. And you have to move from there now. As we were praying, we were told to move. Very rude, you know. And she actually went up and she told the priest that we wouldn't move. Oh, Karen type. Yeah. So I wasn't happy with that. So the priest came down, but unknown to do? her, she didn't realize that the priest actually knew us to see. We're not from that parish, but he knows us, mm -hmm. you know. So the priest didn't say anything, you know. Yeah. But she was, she was like a Hitler in the church. Yeah. Yeah, they were doing that today yeah. when we walked in, like it was, you know, so here, it's here. So I just ignore them, yeah, just ignore them because it's rude. Yeah. We, you know, churches yeah. are the, the building, yeah. they, like our hospitals, they yeah. are owned 
by the Irish yeah, people. Yeah, not all the churches are the same, Gemma, because I was no. at Mass today and there was none of that. There was no there was masks. None of that. Like the people had, might, a couple of people might have masks on them. They did keep social distance from different seats and whatever. And then the priests were nice about it. They gave out the communion, you know. So yeah. The, some churches are not the same. You know, no. They're all not the same. No. You know? And then some of the priests then, like they probably had to take the orders from Dermot Martin, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's himself and the government need to get in line properly there for the people. But they're not going because they're only following the yeah. globalist well, agenda. They're masters in yeah, the UN. Yeah. Well, but it's the Irish people. Yeah. The people that have to, got yeah. to complain. Well, the people own the church, Gemma. It is the people at the end of the day that are the church. Yeah. You see, the church is only, it's what's, the church is perfect. It's what's inside the church is not perfect, you see. And this is what the problem is. Yeah. People have to get that through their brain that, like, the priests have just as much faults. They could even have more faults than the people, the lay people. We don't know. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that about every priest, but I'm only saying in general. You know, so I think that, you know, they have to see it from both sides. They have to see it from us as lay people going to mass and what we have to put up with, like the changes. They're not. They're not normal though. In some churches, they're not normal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because. I, I don't like it, you know what I mean? No. I, I want to be able to go to Mass and do my own thing, pray to God and be left alone. I don't want to have to be told I have to sit on this spot, that spot. Like it's like playing Twister, isn't it? There's another game yeah. called Twister. I've never yeah. had it, but I've yeah. heard about it. But I did feel a lot of people weren't social distancing in that they wanted to be sort of together in, yeah. in Mass today. And the churches seem very busy, which yeah. is great. Oh, that's I good, think yeah. our message is getting through because yeah. effectively it's people like us now who are defending our faith. Yeah. It's not being defended from the churches by the priests by and large because we know they shut their doors. So, yeah. but the people want to go back to mass and they want normality yeah. again. And they don't want They need want reassurance this. as well. They do. Yeah. Well, they want leadership, yeah, exactly. but they're not getting it. Yeah. They're not getting it. But we don't want dictatorship, Gemma. No. We don't want dictatorship in the no. church. We don't want to be told now we have to wear masks going to mm -hmm. mass. Or we have to get vaccines, Gemma. This is where I don't want to see it going, you know. But this is the thing. Well, I hope not. Well, in America, I was watching stream recently, a video recently about how some of the churches in America are starting to take names and do the contact tracing. And the idea being that if you don't have your vaccine, you won't even be able to go to church. Um, so be very careful in that regard. Yeah. About well, they lose a lot of people that way as well. Well, they will. They l will actually lose true Catholics, you yeah. know what I mean? Or Orthodox Catholics by doing that, because if that's the case, I won't be gone. Yeah. There's too much of this order following in Ireland. It's like it's like people should just think it's direct relationship between you and God. Yeah. That's it. There's no middle You're man. not answerable yeah. to anybody else. No. Just God. Well, they are actually forgetting that God's the ultimate person. He's in charge of everything. He's the king of the universe. Whether you believe or not believe, mm. you're in for a shock for what's coming. You know what I mean? Either way. Why do you say that? Well, do you feel the messages that? from Medjugorje and the messages from Fatima, like we're, we're living in the apocalypse, whether people accept it or not. The book of Revelations. If you haven't read the book of Revelations and if you thought it was a bit out there, I advise you to because yeah. everything is in it. that book. Yeah. And I, don't, I can't say I'm yeah. overly familiar yeah. with it. Cause yeah. Well, even the chip is in it. I have been reading it a yeah. lot recently and the mark of the yeah. beast. Well, the Catholics the cannot go, go with this chip. You cannot go with this chip or this vaccine because this vaccine is supposed to have the chip in it. And we will not be marked with the mark of the beast under no circumstances. Under so, no, and yeah, I, you know, you know and, I, and, and it's mm -hmm. against our fate to do this. Of course it is. Because it's in the Bible. Yeah. So anybody yeah. that promotes that, let it be a priest, a bishop or whatever, they're working for the opposite side, yeah. which is the devil, you see. So you're either on God's side or you're on the devil's side. Yeah. So which side are you going to be working for? You can't be a priest in a church and push a vaccine or a bishop you know, or a cardinal, you can't, you see, because you've been instructed already, it's in the Bible. I, I would advise anyone mm. to, We are, most of you will have a Bible at home, maybe it has dust on it, maybe it hasn't been read for a long, long time, but dig it out if you haven't 
Or really get yourself is. a St. James Bible. Or get one. Yeah. Get one. It's increasingly difficult. Yeah. Increasingly difficult. There is one beautiful bookshop that I want to let people know about, a Catholic bookshop. They're few and far between now. We used to have them everywhere. But in the Benedictine Monastery in Silverstream in Stamullen, which is uh, near Gormanstown, just beyond Balbriggan, um, the Benedictine monks there have the most beautiful bookshop. If you need to get your Catholic catechism, lovely Bibles, everything you need uh, to re-familiarise yourself with your Catholic faith, they have beautiful statues of Our Lord, Our Lady. That is a very good place to go. But I would advise you, read the book of Revelations. And if you do not, after reading it, feel that everything that is in there is coming to pass now, well, then you haven't read it properly. Well, people need to look at EWTN as well. Yeah. Because they're praying nonstop. They're not praying for nothing. No. They know well, what's coming. Well, a lot of people are praying nonstop yeah. now. But, the, but normally they'd have the rosary, the mass, and then they'd have a gap of something else. Now it's prayer, 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 prayer. It's the divine mercy, it's the mass, it's the rosary, it's praying, it's the litany, it's everything, you know? And the, the amount of cars I see now who have their rosary beads mm -hmm. hanging from the reflector mirror, which yeah. is wonderful. Well, there's it's an awful lot of people see. have gone to Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. Like that really has brought people back to prayer. And that's what Our Lady has asked for in Medjugorje. Pray, pray, pray. She's saying that all the time, Gemma. Yeah. And don't forget, like, even if you don't have a Bible, say a rosary. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The rosary is the weapon. If you don't know it the rosary, our say our, our father, say it slowly. Mm -hmm. Like what St. Therese said, she said, say it slowly, meditate. She used to go into ecstasy saying the rosary, yeah. just the our father. Yeah. She'd get lost even just saying probably the first two words, our father. Yeah. And she'd go completely into ecstasy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. some of the videos yeah. on Taylor Marshall's website teach you about mm -hmm. the rosary, how to say a good mm -hmm. rosary, how to focus what it means, mm. all of the different... To pray it slowly, Gemma. Yeah. We just need to talk to Our Lady. Mm -hmm. Speak to Jesus slowly. Like the way we're having a conversation now. Yeah. Tell him exactly the way you feel, what you want is protection, what we need help with. We need a new government, one that's going to lead the, the country in the correct way. We need a collapse of all the yeah. political parties yeah. and to start again. We didn't vote for what's in. No. Did you vote for them? <laughs> are you joking? No. <clears throat> I didn't vote for them. None of my family voted for them. No. So why are they 